Hey there, Mr. Mises here, and I'm going to be talking about approximating using Riemann sums and trapezoids. Well, I'll do a second video on trapezoids. Right now, I'm just going to do Riemann sums. So, Riemann sums, they sound, uh, it sounds complicated. It's really not. Riemann sums is just a simple way of saying, look, add up some rectangles, because that's the best way we can do. <laughs> that's really all it's saying. Okay, there's now there's different methods for it. There's a uh, uh, we can either do a midpoint Riemann sum where we're looking at rectangles that we're using the midpoint of that rectangle or we have um, uh, circumscribed which means we're using rectangles that are outside the 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 curve um, which is going to be an overestimate we have inscribed which is going to be a rectangle that's inside the uh, the the curve uh, which is going to be an underestimate. We also have right hand or left hand, and that depends on whether we're going to start from the uh, rightmost point of the the uh, the curve or the leftmost point of the curve, and then create our rectangles based on that. Now we won't we won't be able to tell if it's an underestimate or overestimate using those uh, right hand or left hand unless, of course, we knew the concavity. So if we knew the concavity, then we'd be able to tell me well whether the the rectangles above you know, shaded outside or giving me an overestimate or um, the rectangles inside the curve, which gives me uh, an underestimate. So let's take a look at a few examples here. Um, so let's take, uh, we're going to approximate from 0 to 10 the area of f of x by adding the areas of the five rectangles. Now what I have here shown is a midpoint Riemann sum. sum. So notice here that we have right in the middle of this rectangle, that's the midpoint. Okay, that's 3. And the midpoint here is 1. Now, normally, we're not going to use a Riemann sum unless we have data, really, on an AP exam. They're really going to give us data values, and that's when we know we're going to use a Riemann sum. Uh, otherwise, we're probably going to just use the function that they give us and use antiderivatives. But in this case, we've got to use Riemann sum. So notice here that the height of my rectangle is going to be, um, in this case, f of 1, right? Because this is the height. My height of my rectangle here is f of 3, my height is f of 5, my height here is f of 7, and my height there is f of 9. So to find the area of the rectangles, we're simply just going to do um, base times height. So how far is that? That's 2, right? Each one of these is 2. So I'm going to go f of 1, f of 1 times 2, plus f of 3 times 2 plus f of 5 times 2, plus f of 7 times 2, plus f of 9 times 2, right? Because I'm just doing the height, you know, and this is going to be approximately 0 to 10 of f of x dx. I know that looks like a 16. That's really a 10, guys. 10. Okay, approximately equal to all this stuff. All right, so we're just going to do, go, what's f of 1? f of 1 we can find by looking in the table right here. f of 1 is 2. So 2 times 2 plus f of 3 is 5. f of 5 is 3. Oops. f of 7 is 1. And again, I'm finding these values on the table. f of 9 is 3 times 2. All right, so then I'm going to add all those up, and when all is said and done, I'm going to get 28 square units all right so that is the approximation using a midpoint Riemann sum we just take the rectangles and find the midpoint of those rectangles of five rectangles In this case it tells us how many rectangles let's take a look at another example same using the same data we're gonna do an upper or a circumscribed Riemann sum in this case and so the way we're gonna write this out is that we're gonna say the integral from 0 to 10 of f of x dx is equal to well now we got to make these rectangles we got five rectangles okay so five rectangles means that I'm gonna have um, in order to do five equal rectangles I'm gonna need to split this up into five sections right so we've got you know one two three four five and this is going to be circumscribed so it's outside the Rima the outside so I'm gonna just go up here till I get to the function and then go out and make my rectangle. And then here, I'm going to go up. Now, if I went across here, I'd be inside, so I can't. i got to go all the way up so it's outside the function. Okay, in this case, I can go up here 
and then go outside. All right, we've got that rectangle. This one I can go up here, it'll be outside. And this one I can go all the way up here and it'll be outside. So see, we didn't go from the left or the right. Um, a right, a left-hand Riemann sum, if it was a left hand, I would actually start at 10, go up and then over to eight, up and over to eight, up to six and go over like that. Okay, just like that. If this was a, hold on a second, let me give a, where's my pen? Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Pen. Okay, let me zoom in here. If I was to do a right hand, okay, a right hand would start here, go across, start at two, go up and over, then go to four, up and over, then go to six, up and over, and eight, up and over. So it looks a little bit different because I'm going um, to the function, then going over from the right. Okay, so let's go and finish this off here. All right, actually, I got to go back and change my pen. Sorry about that, folks. I want to go blue. Okay, let me zoom in here. Whoa, I zoomed in way too close. Okay, <laughs> so, um, so what are we doing here? Well, how much is the width? It's two each time, right? So it's going to be two each time. I'm just going to put a two in a parentheses. And now what is the height? The height here is going to be two times four plus what's the height here? The height is five plus height here is four plus the height here is two plus the height here is five. And I just got that because that's what the y values are. So I don't even really, you know, I'm just kind of looking at it. It's not, not even on the function really, right? I'm just looking at the height from the from the, the graph, all right? And then I'm going to say is approximately, I want to say approximately because this is not going to be, you know, it's not going to be, uh, okay, this right here is approximately. It's not going to be perfect. But this part right here is going to be equal to 40 square units, all right? So that's using an upper circumscribed, okay? So let's take a look now at a, ooh, oops, next page. Okay, at a lower, let's see if I can get this the right size, there we go. A lower inscribed Riemann sum, okay? So a lower inscribed Riemann sum, we're gonna go inside. So here, for the two, we're inside. And you know what, I don't really need the table for this. Oh, actually, I, I don't really need a table, so I'll just cover that up so we can see this. And then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to stay inside. All right, so I'm not going to go outside of the thing. Got to do the same rectangles, guys, because, okay, oh, I don't want to go all the way up there, so I'm going to have to go right here. And here's going to be this tiny one here, and then 10. It's got to be right here, because if I went all the way up, I'd be outside. So I don't want any of these rectangles to go outside of the curve, because then it wouldn't be inscribed, right? So what do I have here? Integral from 0 to 10 of f of x dx is approximately equal to 2 times 2, again, is the width. 2 times 0, 0 height for this rectangle. For this rectangle here, we have a height of 4. For the next rectangle, we have a height of 2. The next rectangle, 1. And the next rectangle after that is 2. We get 18. All right. We could clearly see that this is an underestimate. And we clearly see that the previous one is an overestimate. All right, so let's take a look at one where we would use a function. And this time we are um, going to do approximate this function here. We're going to use midpoints with three equal subintervals from 0 to 6. So here's 0 to 6. We want three subintervals. So that's going to be three rectangles, each of them going up to here, right? So I'm just going to draw these guys. Okay, they look like that. This one kind of goes a little higher here. I didn't go high enough on that. Okay, so this is what these rectangles look like. And so we're going to say the integral from 0 to 6 of square root of x squared plus 10 dx is approximately equal to, all right, what is this length? or the width, I guess, is 2. So I'm just going to say it's 2 times. Now, what's this height here? This height here is f of 1. What's this height here? This is f of 3. What's this height here? 
This is f of 5. So we've got to plug these things in. So f of 1, when I put that in, is going to give me square root of 11. f of 3, when I get that in, is going to give me square root of 19. 5, when I plug that in, is going to give me square root of 35. Because I'm using those are the functions, right? And that is my answer, square units. All right, so that's the midpoint using an actual function. All right, let's take a look at one more, and then I'm going to start looking at what we call the trapezoidal rule, and I'll do that on, on another video. So this time we're going to use the right-hand rectangles, okay? And in this case, they're not equal width. They're different widths. They're widths of, um, we're going to be at negative 10, negative 4, 0, 3, and 5. Okay, and we're going to go right hand. So we're going to start on this side and go up like that. And then this one, well, we're not going to really go anywhere here. Oops. And so this one, we're going to go down over to 4. And 4 is going to go down and over to 10. Okay. And then we've got our right hand rectangles. So what is our what is our length here? Six. How about here? Is four. All right. Here we don't really have uh, anything. Oh, we. I'm sorry, I missed one. I missed one. Two. Okay. So then this one we have to go here to zero. Okay. So then we have a width of two here. Uh, we have a width of one here, and we have a width of two here. Okay, so now we're going to go the integral from negative 10 to 5, 2 to the x minus 8 dx is approximately equal to the width, which is 6, and then we're at the height, which is, uh, we went here, right? So we went to here, so it's 2 to the negative 4 minus 8, plus the width, which was 4. And then the height, on this case, we started at 0 and went to the function, went down. So that's 2 to the 0 minus 8. Plus, okay, for this one, the length is 2. And we went, we started at x equals 2 for the height. So 2 squared minus 8. Again, I'm just plugging in the x values into my function here. Uh, plus 1, we've got a width of 1. And I guess we'll use this here. So 2 cubed minus 8, okay, with a 1, we'll go down like that, plus, um, then we have this rectangle, and we're using uh, 4, uh, we're using 5, so 2 times 2 to the 5th minus 8, and this is it, we're not going to, I'm not going to calculate that out, I'm just going to leave that like that, okay, unit squared. All right, so there we go, we've got Riemann sums, all right, next video, I'll catch you with trapezoidal rule, see you later.